Wife's friend exposed her affair, so I contacted AP's wife and broke up after hearing details. Hi, first time caller here. As with everyone else, my planned life was flipped upside down earlier this week. The crux of my question is, is it weird to want the whole truth and details from my ex? Should I just assume the worst? I know I can't trust any of the details relayed and they're not going to change anything. How do I shake this desire? Full story, my now ex, Jenna, and I met sophomore year in undergrad. I followed her to medical school. We had been together for almost eight years this week. We had planned a wedding and huge honeymoon for May 2020, as this would be the time between school and residency. January 2020, we were as happy as ever. We had typical ups and downs, but nothing major, our life goals were similar, our interests were similar, our families were similar and loved by both of us. February 2020, Jenna went to a month-long elective course, essentially a summer camp for medical students. It was her first time away from me for a significant amount of time. There was little cell service, but when I did hear from her she sounded chipper and like she was making a lot of friends. I started to get nervous though when she told me how much she was drinking. Up until this camp she rarely drank, and in the six years together I had only seen her drunk a few times. She was drunk more than a few times at this camp, including one blackout type night. With this weird behavior and probably some personal insecurity, I started having panic attacks worrying about her cheating on me. There was nothing from our past that would make me feel that way, she was just acting out of the ordinary with the extra drinking that my mind thought the worst. March 2020, Jenna got home from camp on the last day of February. She seemed excited to be home, and we had some of the best sex I had had in years that first week back, but it felt strange. She had this weird sexual energy I hadn't seen for years. She was doing things she had never done in bed before. I joked at one point and said who taught you this at camp and she wigged out on me. April and May 2020, our wedding got COVID cancelled, our vacation got COVID cancelled, her final fun steps of medical school got COVID cancelled. We moved out of our apartment together and back to our individual parents' houses because our lease was up and we were expecting to move for residency. It was a tough period. We rescheduled the wedding for September 2020. We celebrated our expected wedding day. We even talked about getting married at the courthouse. During this time apart I felt like Jenna had started pulling away from me a bit and was being more distant, including a trip to North Carolina to meet up with some of her new camp friends, I was not invited and this was the first time either of us had really disinvited another on a vacation. June 2020, we went house shopping and bought a house together. When we were together I noticed that passwords had been changed on her phone. Alarms started going off in my head with all of the previous information combined, but she assured me nothing was wrong. Her camp friends just thought it was weird that I had unlimited access to her phone, and that level of non-privacy is controlling. I was also told that she just didn't know herself anymore, and that I was smothering her. She also lamented the fact that there were no fireworks between us, no electricity anymore, and that she was just not sexually attracted to me. July 2020, we closed on the house and moved in. We had a few long talks this month. It felt like she was being coached by one of her new friends, saying I was controlling and paranoid. Things she had never said or felt before. We had a bridal shower for our rescheduled wedding date at the end of the month. Jenna didn't want to sleep, literally, in the same bed with me. I didn't understand why our relationship was torpedoing so fast. August 2020, at the end of the month, Jenna told me she thought she and I should take a break. I had a meltdown. Our relationship had seriously dwindled between April and August. We weren't communicating well. We pretty much stopped having sex completely. She stopped wearing her engagement ring. I chalked it up to all the tumult in our lives. Wedding cancelled, wedding two cancelled, honeymoon cancelled, we bought a house, and she started the most stressful period of her life, residency. September 2020, my mental health took a turn for the worst. I started thinking about nothing but keeping Jenna happy. I worked on the new house and yard nonstop, 
putting my remote job on the back burner. She stopped wanting to be touched at all by me. She started staying out late with co-workers. I'm talking about getting home at 3 to 4 a.m. with near zero communication and smelling like alcohol. October 2020, we went on vacation together for the first time, it was more stressful than fun. When we got back I finally told a friend and my parents what was going on. Everyone was weirded out. I told them everything in here and more and I said I think she's cheating. My mom said she was treating me like a roommate rather than a partner. It was true. I finally sat her down and said either she was in or out. I wasn't her roommate and if we're together she has to wear her ring. November-December 2020, we had had sex about once a month since moving into the new house. Late December she had to quarantine and essentially kicked me out of the house. I abided. The relationship was essentially plateaued at the low point. January-February 2021, beginning of January we had another fight after she got home late from a party with her co-workers. She told me she would be home by 8 p.m. and there was no reason for me to come, that got pushed back and back until one text where she asked if she could stay the night. She was also drinking heavily at the party again. By early February, to Jenna's dismay, I signed us up for relationship counseling. She didn't really want to participate, but did because I asked. After the first session she pretty much said she didn't like the counselor. We each did one individual session and two joints. Jenna also took a vacation to Florida, driving 1,000 miles herself each way by herself in a week. She didn't want me to come. March-June 2021, our relationship is on the mend. She seemed happier on a daily basis. We got into a good groove of life together again. I started individual therapy because the fall-winter relationship issues had sent me into a spiral. I started to trust her again. She seemed to be talking to her camp friends less and was more invested in our relationship. She never left the house without her engagement or wedding band, this was true in previous months since October, but it became more obvious slash consistent. We were joking as a team again. I started feeling comfortable leaving her slash the house for long weekends when she was working, previously, I had convinced myself she would go out partying if I went away for a weekend so I would keep an unfairly close eye on her. This week, I went on a long weekend trip with my parents. Tuesday morning, I overheard a conversation from Saturday night with a guy from the February 2020 camp. It was not a normal conversation. Jenna was drinking, sounded a little tipsy but definitely not drunk, and was flirting her butt off. She sounded like the instigator. She talked about a secret meetup in the beginning of August and the skimpy clothes she wore. She talked about the other times they met up. She talked about next February going back to the same camp again and asked this guy if it was okay if she came, saying, are you worried because you don't trust me, or you don't trust yourself? Another great line from Jenna was, I want to see you restrained when you really 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 I want something because I have a feeling I'm going to be blown away impressed by it. Can't wait till February. The conversation made it obvious. I was right from the beginning when I suspected cheating. All the red flags she convinced me were nothing and that I was just crazy were legit. The conversation made it sound like they talked often. He even called back in the morning. I know who this guy is. He's the camp coordinator, married, older, and lives in Virginia. I instantly called my parents and two friends and asked for advice. I knew I was going to break up with her, I just didn't know how. I confronted her when she got home from work, telling her to take a seat at the dining room table. I asked her, can you tell me what Nick, the caller, is to you? He's just a friend. She said, oh, just a friend. I replied. And she says I've never told you this, but he's one of the best friends I made at camp. I pressed more and more. Dropping hints of the depth I knew. Eventually she broke. Admitted to seeing him on her way back from Florida in February. I had to tell her I also knew of the August meetup. She admitted they drunkenly made out at camp and she has been in touch with him for the past 16 months on a relatively consistent basis. His wife has no idea etc etc. So she emotionally cheated on me at the very least, 
leaving me in the dust in one of the most important years of our life in terms of transitions and gaslight me into trusting and continuing to love slash provide for her. All the puzzle pieces fit. The relationship tanked specifically when they were talking the most. She wanted to break up at the end of August right after they met up. The weird I want to drive 2,000 miles by myself to Florida in February. So let's get on to what she says happened and the details, in order, near the end of camp both of them got drunk at a bonfire and made out while no one was around. She later added there was over the clothes groping. I also know slash remember her telling me about this night, the first night she has ever thrown up from drinking. She slept on the bathroom floor and a couch in the common area. She says she was extremely attracted to him and felt the fireworks that she hasn't felt between us for years. They continued talking through March May, apparently his relationship with his wife isn't the best and he convinced her that her relationship with me was bad. June 2020 apparently he asked for nudes. Originally Jenna told me she sent bra slash bikini pics. Two days later when pressed she admitted to sending topless pics. That same month, Jenna told me I could take nude pictures of her. Never had happened before, and I thought it was weird to happen now in the midst of a bunch of other red flags. She admitted that Nix inspired her to offer to me. Probably guilt. In August they apparently met up for 30 minutes before he went to work at a park and went for a hike. In February they met up for coffee. Apparently she received a side hug in 30 minutes of time after waiting for an hour for him to get off work. She said there has never been any sex, which I'm torn in believing and not believing. She said their conversations are most often about work, and they called it quits on the flirty stuff around the new year, possibly Nick's resolution, to be honest. Apparently the past couple weeks they started talking more and getting back into flirting. What this all boils down to is, I broke up with her. We're still talking. We've told some friends and family. Her mom and I cried when I called. Jenna is distraught, I can't tell if it's not being together or that she will have very few friends after this gets out. She says her mom is considering checking her into a facility lol. I told Jenna that she should notify Nick of what has transpired and tell him to talk to his wife. She relayed that and apparently he freaked out. How unkosher is it to reach out to his wife myself? I don't know what to believe and I want as many details as I can get, but I don't know why, I know I can't trust the ones given, and don't think they will change anything. How do I shake this feeling? We have reached the end of the story. Let's listen to some of the comments by our Reddit listeners. Comment 1. Absolutely contact Nick's wife. Do not believe for a second that adults with time on their hands did not have sex. Get some space from this whole thing. Work on yourself, get your head on straight before any decision on continuing the relationship. This may take a few months. Sorry this has happened, good luck. Comment 2. It's kosher and it's the right thing to do. His wife deserves to know. Think of it this way, wouldn't you have wanted her to let you know last March if she had found out? Unfortunately you screwed up by not doing it before confronting your ex. No, her AP is going to be on the lookout to derail any attempted notification. This wasn't his first rodeo. He was experienced enough to coach your ex on how to avoid discovery. I guess he has a new AP at every camp session. Gina is in for a rude awakening about the a-hole for which she nuked your relationship. OP reply. I was actually thinking and worrying about this. He is the camp director and had physical contact with an inebriated student. He absolutely could be predatory and do this again. I know who his boss is as she was there at the camp as well and Jenna has talked about her. She sounds non-nonsense and Jenna even said if this gets out Nick could lose his job. I would do it in a heartbeat however, I don't want to put myself in legal jeopardy and how I obtained initial information. I'm divorcing my cheating wife who turned out to be not straight and crazy about women after I got back from army. Last Sunday was my D-Day. My wife was out with her female co-worker, yup, for the second weekend in a row. She was out the previous weekend when I was at drill until 4.30 a.m. and I had a conversation with her. I know she is bi and I support her but please don't ever cheat on me, and I don't like her being out so late because it causes me anxiety. 
About a week or two before that, she told me that she was bisexual and wants to be more open. She always mentioned liking women, but this was the first time admitting being bi. Fast forward to last Saturday, and we talked, and I told her I didn't want her to be out until 4 a.m. again because we had a busy Sunday planned. Fast forward to 11 p.m. that night, and I'm asking her what time she will be coming home, and she says she's just hanging out. My gut knows something is up so I don't sleep. We keep texting back and forth. Around 2.30 a.m. she says she is heading home, I call 40 minutes later wondering where she is, and she tells me she's getting ready to drop her friend off at her car. She doesn't get home until 5 a.m. I'm annoyed that I don't say anything. We got up two hours later. I come downstairs and she says let's talk. I already know something is up and she goes to tell me how supportive and great I am, how understanding I have been, and then tells me she and this girl kissed. I'm blown away but try not to freak out too much because I don't understand why she cheated when just had a conversation a week ago. We talk for two hours and then we talk some more only to find out more details that it wasn't a kiss, but they made out. I then had to get it out of her that they made out three separate times that night, while she was in communication with me. At first, I wasn't as mad as I thought because I don't think I processed it, and I was like if you're bi let's explore with women and maybe this chick. No idea why I said that because that's not what I wanted at all. We moved to another room to talk and I started getting frustrated with her because she never cried or did anything emotionally for hurting me just kept saying I'm sorry I hurt you, but I am relieved that I did it. I asked to see her phone to see how long this has been going on and the first message I see has a reaction she sent to the other girl that was I miss your mouth already. I kept asking her why she cheated instead of talking to me and she kept saying that was her only regret. I told her to contact this other woman and tell her she needs to stop talking to her to save our marriage. The text she sent her was nothing that we talked about as she defended her the whole time. We end up getting into another fight because I don't know how to process it. I ask her a question, she gets super defensive, and I take a ton of pills and get in my car and drive. She's calling and telling me what I want to hear, and I am having a meltdown, screaming, crying, everything because over eight years have gone by. I finally come home hours later and we talk again and I ask her if she wants this to work, I'm told she doesn't know or she wants to but she's not sure if she's just not straight because she doesn't find men attractive, etc. I ask her again, do you want me to leave and do you love me? She says no and yes and we can do counseling. I tell her she needs to cut this other girl out and we need to work on us. This causes her to cry and ask when will I be able to talk to her again? I'm again hurt because none of this compassion is being shown towards me. She agrees to work it out, but keeps mentioning if she's not straight it's not going to work. She sleeps with no issue, I feel guilty and jealous and angry. She never makes out with me, doesn't let me go down on her, doesn't send anything sexual to me, but does all of this to someone she's known for three months. The next morning, last Monday, I told her we needed to talk. I said this person can't be a part of us and that possibly could have been if she didn't cheat and lie. She breaks down and starts crying. I ask her how can this person you know for only three months be so important to you that you're allowing them to ruin our marriage to which I am told she makes me feel comfortable. I then ask her to leave and I can't do this. We have been very civil and amicable since. Looking to do the cheapest divorce possible. She wants me to keep the house we just bought, all the pets, everything. She just wants nothing to do with her previous life. Why this hurts me so much, I moved to a place I hated, took a lower paying job, put my career on hold so she could get into the nursing school she wanted. Now, I am 3.5 classes away from finishing grad school. I make okay money at my job, but not compared to an RN who can get overtime. I feel powerless, worthless, my confidence is destroyed, I'm betrayed, I lost people I've known for 8 years. Did we have the perfect marriage, no? I was always asking why she only wanted to do one or two positions with me, never initiated, we never made out, would let me go down on her, the list goes on. She just always seemed very lazy and would put others ahead of me, yet she supported me in the same manner to do grad school etc. I feel like I wasted my life trying to make a better future for us, and that wasn't what she wanted once it happened. We've been in our house less than a year, and it needs work. 
She's now the breadwinner while I work on my dual masters and work full time. I just feel like I failed as a husband. I know the percentage of marriages that end in divorce, and now all I can think about is when will I get cheated on again, or is another relationship worth it just to get hurt? I love this woman, I did everything to make our lives work, and she took the future away in one selfish evening. I don't get it. I don't know why she just didn't talk to me when we literally had this conversation a week ago. It's been a week since I asked her to leave. We spoke on Saturday, and I was trying not to be a mess, and she sounded fine on the phone. I had to put it on mute a few times to scream due to hearing her voice. I've mentally processed that the marriage is over and she's not the person I married or want to be married to. However, everything is a reminder and now I have five pets, grad school, a full-time job, and National Guard to do. I just need to survive long enough until February when I am done with the degrees. Money will be tight, but I can do it. I am just scared for the future. The future I had is ruined. I am 33 and feel so far beyond where I should be because I sacrificed to help her get where she needed to be. The past week was tough, lots of pills, no eating, no sleeping just drowned it out with whatever I could find and adult stuff. I feel better this week but I still feel so alone because she has this girl to run to and I have no one now. For those of you who have dealt with infidelity, how did it affect future relationships? Did you get remarried? Are you happier now? Is it possible to be loved again and not worry about infidelity happening? Are relationships worth it anymore? Thank you and sorry for the novel. We have reached the end of the story. Let's listen to some of the comments by our Reddit listeners. Comment 1. Dude your life is not over. You are young and this will in time become a distant memory. Better that you learn this now than after you could have had kids together. She is deep in the affair fog and there is a good possibility that she will come back asking to try again. Stay strong. Comment 2. You're in the guard. You just dodged a frigging bullet. Hear that high-pitched ping and the poof of dust right next to your head. That was her. You need to communicate through a third party. You need to go and see as much as possible. You need to imagine what you want yourself and your life to look like without her, make a plan and execute. It will suck. As time and distance increase you'll realize that she wasn't a good wife or partner. We fall in love with these train wrecks, but never see the red flags until we're far away, and then we look back and it's a Chinese May Day parade. Comment 3 She's most likely in the fog which is why she's not too bummed about you leaving, that'll probably change once she comes out of it although that shouldn't matter to you since she sounded like a crummy partner to begin with and once you realize that, you'll realize that being separated was for the best.